this was an amazing bit of fortune that I went to Park Royal Studios and they were happened to be gutting one of the studios. So they'd taken all of the white cove off the wall and it suddenly looked like a church. It looked like some sort of um, Florentine chapel because the fashion photography of the giant furnace said it's the new religious art. Yeah. Um, and it seemed totally appropriate. You know, it's burst further about this is at eight o'clock in the morning in this beautiful white space that had become this Florentine-esque chapel. Um, and also I like the fact it was a sort of the white cove represents the last bits of fashion, the little bit of fashion. Yeah. Because Lee had a slightly not difficult relationship with fashion, I don't think he felt it was difficult, but he was at the same time insulting of it and at the same time praising of it. Yeah, he had a love-hate relationship with it. I mean, that's kind of the cliche, but it's true. Um, and I think that he loved making clothes and making things, but I'm not so sure how interested he was in making... He wanted to make money, but I don't think he wanted to... Commercial. I don't think he was very interested in commercialising his clothes creatively. No. Um, and I also think he wasn't interested in the gloss and the hierarchy and yeah. the kissy-kissiness of it. I think all his relationships were founded on trust. I don't think he was interested in status, which is really interesting because actually the fashion industry, by and large, is entirely status-driven. Mm. Um, it's interesting that... You say this was so perfect because this is from Dante, which was a collection about religion and war, right. wasn't it? And and so it makes it even... I mean, you, you maybe just instinctively felt that, but that's what it was about. So the braiding and on the tailoring is about that. And this collection was the first collection, I think, where Lee really got interested in the bigger picture, in a way. He got interested right. in the art direction. Right. So he showed it in a deconsecrated... Well, no, we all thought it was deconsecrated because it was so wild, but it was actually consecrated right. church in Spitalfields. Right. It was the first McQueen collection I saw. So, okay, so let me just be totally ignorant here. When it's deconsecrated, deconsecrated... It wasn't deconsecrated. But what does that mean? Does it mean it it means that it's no longer in space? service. <laughs> Well, that, I don't know what the terminology is either. Say, actually, this is just a space now, it's no longer a church. Well, that's what everyone assumed, and that's what everyone printed. And the church warden, I think, wrote to the Guardian saying, right. you know, that myself, I was there at the time, and every other journalist had said it was deconsecrated, but actually right. it wasn't. And they'd been led to believe by this very nice girl who turned out to be Trino right. that the, it would all be terribly demure and respectful. And in the end, there was a skeleton sitting front row next to Susie, <laughs> and there was obviously nudity, and there were obviously pictures of war. And yeah. so it was actually a very subversive thing for Lee to do. You know, in a, He'd already been subversive, but he was subversive on a slightly larger scale. Right. And I think he was interested in the staging of Dante as well as the clothes. And I think that was probably where he started breaking into that, into the idea of the wide angle, bigger picture beyond the clothes. When you say the wide angle, because I noticed in your piece you wrote for another, you used the term a couple of times. What do you mean by that? I mean that there was always, and it was pre-internet really, and it yeah. was pre-live streaming or anything like yeah, that. Absolutely. Lee was really interested in the impact of his clothes outside fashion and his vision outside fashion. So he was really excited about the wide angle image in the press, literally wide angle image, landscape image of the set, showing right. more than just a straight up and down look in the papers the following day. He got a real buzz out of that. Right. Um, and I think that also goes back to what we were talking about before, the love-hate relationship, because I think that Lee thought quite a lot of, about fashion was stupid. Really? But he was incredibly passionate about expressing himself. It was his canvas. He used it as a canvas. He obviously loved the making of it and the, craft, the craftsmanship and the people who make it as well. Yeah. But he was definitely interested in extending beyond the reach of the people who might buy his clothes. Yeah. He wanted to say something beyond... This looks great, look at this setting, you can go and buy it in Browns. He was interested in something bigger than that. So do you think, because when you say the wide angle picture, um, it's really the, it's the installation, the catwalk as an installation. Yeah. So really, if we look at it that way, yeah. what we're saying is he was an artist in the sort of more in a sort of, it's almost fashion theatre that he's putting across. Definitely. So an artist in the sort of register of any performance artist, really, yeah. and he's using fashion as a performance. But also in, in, the, in, the, in the same way as you're an artist, you know, you're not... I think a lot of people think when they see, you know, certainly more conventional fashion in, um, imagery that it, readers think, actually, that mm. it's advertising. 
Right, so, really? So, yeah, as an editor at a newspaper, I know that I used to get letters saying, the piece that you advertised on page 56 is not mm. available. And I'd think, wow, they think it's advertising. Yeah. It wasn't advertising, it was editorial. I think Lee and you, mm. which is why you fitted so well, you weren't interested necessarily in selling clothes. Of course clothes are inspiring, of, cl of course yeah. clothes are life enhancing, of course clothes are incredibly communicative, but it, it's more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 